the very um, activity that you and I are doing right now that we're seeing each other in physical body and talking, the fact that like we're here in this realm, I think everybody forgets like it's a freaking miracle. We just take for granted that we've come from another realm, a spirit realm without a body and have petitioned to have a body to come through a time portal, which is the womb and step into this existence and animate ourselves you know, like, and what the hell? Share. Like, that is the big miracle. Like, it doesn't get better than that. I live better than a king ever did. I live better than a king. Oh, 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 oh. I don't need a king. I've got a puppy and I've got a car. And I've got friends and love in my heart. And I've got the constitution. Welcome, Freedom Junkies, to Freedom Junkie Radio Podcast, the podcast that brings all of us more freedom in our lives, whatever that might look like. Today, I have a very special guest, a magical guest. I'm very excited about having her on. But I need y'all to know that there have been goings-ons behind the scenes for Freedom Junkie Radio. I have a busy life. I homeschool my kids, and I play lots of music and I write books. And so sometimes Freedom Junkie Radio takes a little hiatus, which it has done. I have three amazing guests lined up for this month. I will be interviewing my my homeopath, who we don't understand homeopathy here in the United States. So that's coming up. She's going to help us shine some light on that. And I'm going to be interviewing Larkin Rose, who has put out a, a wonderful allegorical film lately called The Jones Plantation, which I highly recommend watching. I'll be interviewing him. And I also have to let you know that I now have a sponsor. Freedom Junkie Radio has a sponsor, and it is the sweet man and shop where I buy my gold and silver. And most of you are aware that gold and silver is a wonderful hedge against inflation. If you had $20 100 years ago and you bought a gold coin with it, that gold coin is now worth, I want to say $2,000 or something around there. I don't know what an ounce of gold is worth. A $20 bill is just worth a $20 bill and you can't get much with it. So it's always a good hedge for inflation, a good place to put your money. The holidays are coming up. So go see Chris on Slaughter Lane in Austin, Texas. It's Chris with a K, Chris's Coins, K-R-I-S, coins.com. And tell him Betsy from Freedom Junkie Radio sent you. That way he'll know that his sponsorship is working out in favor for him too. Chris, thank you so much for sponsoring the show and putting your money where your heart is. So now with no further ado, I want to bring on my guest today. My guest is, goes by Phoenix Rising. She is an amazing being who's a healer and a magical human walking this earth with us and her insight as far as life and love and even what's going on in the world is quite deep and profound. Uh, She once went as Nae Moses. She was a a Grammy nominated, we'll get there, pop star a few decades ago, and she left the music industry. And that's what I want to ask her about. Let me just bring her on. Phoenix Rising, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm thrilled to finally grace your amazing podcast because I've been checking in and watching it. And, you know, when I met you in Austin, I was like, oh, that's my sister girl right there talking about the freedom, being the junkie for freedom and, you know, coming into our human awakening, being a beautiful musician and songwriter and author and mother and all the things that you are. Um are exactly what we need and what I resonate with. So thank you for having me on your show. I'm excited. Well, yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. I've known you for a while. You're in my circle of friends. We have mutual friends. And so let's just jump right in. I I am curious about your awakening back in the day, but let's start with your music career because when we've gotten together in person, 
I've never really gotten you to spill the beans. I'm so curious about it because I'm a musician as well. I kind of forwent the music industry. I was always an indie musician. I recorded my own stuff and did my own marketing. I never even considered signing with anyone. I, I don't want to give anything. It's, it's I, anyway, I, and I think I always kind of like Hollywood, I had been warned that the music industry was just gross and you really don't want to get involved. And I think it's true. And you know a whole lot more about it than I do. So tell us about your experience as Naeem Moses. And was it a Grammy nomination or did you win a Grammy? What was it? And what was your song back in the day? I, you know what? I So I did not. So I was not Grammy nominated. I did not win a Grammy. I was just on the Grammy path as um, best new independent indie artist because I too did not sign with the label I was independent and um, I uh, I was what I had was a top 10 uh, billboard hit for 28 weeks uh, that charted on billboard it was actually it rose to number two for 28 weeks and I was right there Alicia Keys her song was number one Nae Moses and my name of the song was between us was number two and uh, queen latifah she had a song out at the time was number three and so i maintained that chart position for um about a month and then at the end of the year they billboard has the top 30 songs best songs of that year and my song ended up on that list as well and that that was you know an amazing amazing feeling especially as an independent artist because what you just said uh, Betsy, I was way too wide awake um, at, by that time. And it was 2008 that that happened. I was way too wide awake to sign with the label. I did it independently. I had It was literally three of us, my songwriting partner and my producer, Susan Youngblood, producer and songwriting partner. And she's won Grammys, by the way, with a group of Evan, Evanescence, if you know their group. She's amazing uh, as a, a vocal um, director and um just incredible songwriter and she has other songs that she's written over the years and hammy who is an amazing uh producer that uh, i had met some years ago and asked him susan i asked him if she would he would produce the songs that we had already been writing together she and i and he was just fantastic he was an artist on capital records i think he was on capital just amazing kind of a d'angelo type amazing writing and when we all three got together we went independently. And um, what most people don't know is that that album took 10 entire years. I don't think I've said that because people are like, oh, it's three years to write the album. Amazing. It literally took 10 years. I as well, as a mother at the time, a single mother, two boys, being a, a celebrity wardrobe stylist, a designer, and always wanting to follow my music because I had always done music in my lifetime. I grew up as playing guitar and violin. I went to performing arts school and studied opera and I sang jazz and I was in jazz bands and all this kind of stuff um, back East in, in Philadelphia. And when I moved to Los Angeles, um, I kind of stopped doing my music for a while. I got into acting a little bit, but the business, you know, the Hollywood thing, it just never resonated with me, you know? So I um, thought, you know what, let me slow, Slowly write what I'm going to write in my own terms, not what a label is going to tell you. Because many times, you know, when you sign with a label, you're in a certain genre, they have to approve songs. If songs don't sound or come up a certain way, you know, you have people around you uh, telling you, you know, how it has to be. Um, I know this because I know a lot of artists who were on labels and I work with many artists. And there's always things that you have to answer to. And like, again, I said, I was way too unplugged from the matrix to have to answer to anybody. So we didn't. And we did a, a I did a, an amazing, you know, some great jobs and I go to the studio and we'd get the musicians together. We'd write the songs back and forth and back and forth for 10 entire years. And one of the things was, okay, this album is going to take so long because we don't have backing except on our own grit that these songs better be classic songs that have no like, oh, that sounds 70s or 80s or 2000, that they sound timeless. And I always said, it has to sound timeless. 
and indeed it's incredible. I have still have a lot of radio play today. I'm on iTunes, I'm on Spotify under Nai Moses, and I have um, a lot of play on um, internet uh, radio. Uh, very cool Talaya Tagueros from The Wave. She still spins me on her FM stations. And so it was, it's really awesome. And and the music stayed, like they're classics. And I knew it was funny because we laughed about it. Like we better do this because it's taking a long time to get this shit together. So we just ran it up. We found a great radio promoter who was working with the big artists of the day. He loved the project to cut cost. He said, listen, guys, um, why don't I send you my mailing list that goes to all the promoters uh, of the radio stations that has my, my labeling on it, but we did the packing, like we did everything, like we did all the grit. And then when it showed up, I mean, really, honestly, I think one of the things that drove it is they thought it was Sade's new album. They literally program director said, oh my God, Sade's back. And I'm like, holy, like what a compliment. Because you know how when Sade stays out of the loop for 10 years, she's doing her thing and writing her music and when people always miss her, but it had a very Sade-esque feel. And I just remember going to radio, um, the program directors when I, I would, you know, fly around and go to the radio stations also backed by one of my producer's best friends, BB, who was an airline stewardess, who said, hey, I'm giving you my buddy pass for an entire year. And I worked that. So it was all our grit. No, no, bat, no radio stations, none of that stuff. We didn't do it. And um, I would show up and they said, wow, you know, um, we don't mean to equate you with Sade or uh, compare you because you're your own artist. And a lot of times artists, they don't like to, you know, be compared to someone because you're your own person. And I was like, listen. <laughs> I am so fine to be equated with Sade, like one of the icon artists and beautiful woman with amazing music. I said, because, you know, a new artist comes out, people need to have a reference point as to where it's like, okay, it's Nye Moses. She sounds like Sade mixed with. And I said, I am so fine with that. And we ran with it, made up a fictitious um, publicist, by the way, I'm saying this for the first time in public named Jennifer Taylor again, because we didn't have have it. And Jennifer Taylor wrote the emails and called radio stations on behest of Naya Moses. And we just ran the hell out of that. And it, we got to billboard and then I started having to perform in big venues and that that's how Naya Moses got to be. Okay. So how and why did you decide to not go with the music industry? If you had such success? Well, you know, it, we started actually when we did um, start um, charting, we got calls from the big record labels and they actually were not that happy <laughs> because as you know, they pay to have their artists on, on spots. They have to. It's like you know, when Janet comes out with something or Alicia, when these artists come out with something, it's business. You actually have to pay no matter how much people love your artists or not, or tickets, you pay to get into these slots. It's just straight business. And so we did have these guys calling up, wondering like, well, who is this person that came out of nowhere and hasn't paid be like, we're our artists. <laughs> we're like, it was like, whoa. And, you know, it's, it's just the reality of the business. But I didn't want to go because I, like, again, I, I have known for years about what it means to be in a label where people are paying for you to show up in a certain way. And it's pure business. It's not, is it the love of the art? Is that, no, you have to show up with certain music um, at certain times with certain people in certain um, groups. And to get to that really high star level when you really are, you're signing a lot of times. I mean, I know to artists, they're signing, you know, their art away. They many times have to. Um, that's the reality. And it's not just music. It's it's in acting. It's in, in many things. It's in sports with, with any of the big people who are really there. And you sign a contract and you're paid by certain entities you have to do what those entities tell you. If you have to go and, you know, you, you see it happening today with uh, what happens, let's just talk about it with uh, the injection. 
you know, if you're not doing that or you're not supporting it or pushing it or you're in a commercial about it telling people that this is what they have to do, um, you lose your contracts. So it's um, like you get canceled. Right. Okay. So it's almost like with yeah. corporate, corporate anything, we should really be anything. doing, we should be buying local, supporting small, independent, everything, because yeah. it, you just really put that together for me. Because all of these people, whether you're a, an athlete or an actor or a musician, you, you're you an, an artist of, you love what you do when you're young and you're practicing and you're working hard and you're getting really good at it and you have aspirations. Ew, to have to give away that which is that flame inside you and to recognize that that's what they've all done. There's also a flip side to that that I've heard about. I want to know what you know about it, but the whole signing your soul away. Is it true? Well, yeah, I, because I didn't have to, to do it and I wasn't up close and personal with it. Right. I didn't go, Oh, wow. They were going to do that to me. So I jumped ship. So I can't say I physically visually saw it with me. However, Without other artists and people, absolutely, 100%. There, and I've seen people who go, I didn't know I was getting into what I was getting into. And they have jumped ship. And like, I'm, that's it. And others are like, you know what? I've got family. I'm here. This is what's happening. And I'm going to do what they tell me to do. And many of them do it joyfully. And many of it, many of them, it breaks their heart. But they keep going on. It just depends on what level you're at, how far you've gotten into it, you know. And yeah, um, they don't allow, it's just, like you said, it's business. It's all corporate. It's corporation. And it's business. They don't allow someone to have a voice to, at, an, at a certain level. Like you and I can sit here and talk about truth. We can talk about the injection. Uh, you know, it's interesting, even just dealing with YouTube at my level, I have a small podcast. Uh, I, have to censor what I put on YouTube because if I don't, they will censor me. I would love to break out on YouTube and reach millions of people. That would be fabulous if the what I have to share, bringing more freedom into people's lives, which I think people are thirsty for, but yeah. there's the algorithms and everything. I will get shut down. So I don't know how sometimes, and my followers know this, if you're a new follower, you need to know this, that the only place that every single one of my podcasts is on is Rumble. Uh, even yeah, Spotify right. has taken yeah. down yeah. some of my podcasts. Even, yeah. So yeah. you're, you're seeing, I just wanted to say that um, it's, 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 you're yeah, 100%. It's just who's, who's paying for the sponsorship. And if you're not with the sponsorships um, ideology, then you're not going and you're, you're not part of the thing. I remember, God, I think it was back in like maybe the early nineties, the Oprah Winfrey show, right? She was getting in shape. This is the perfect example. She was getting in shape. She's always been trying to get in shape. And she decided that she was going to stop eating meat and go a more vegetarian route. So this is more 90s. And she announced on her show that she's going to, you know, go to a more vegetarian diet, cut down the meat. That woman also almost got canceled. And there you go. Because the meat industries who are backing the show every time the commercial comes up for McDonald's or whatever it is, Subway. She just said to her huge audience, I'm not going to eat as much meat. And it was like, it was a moment for her and it was meat or chicken. It was meat. And, you know, now today there's a whole thing going where, no, it's got to be more, you know, there's a, the, the, the narrative has changed, but back then clear example, this happens all the time. So it doesn't matter. It touches everybody, everybody well, who's going to play in the mainstream. It touches everybody. Okay. So, you know, the, the, Oliver Anthony character who came out a few months ago with the song, uh, Richmond, North of Richmond, you know, the phenomenon, right? Right, 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 right. Every single American, probably most people in the world heard of this guy. He's not signed and he's not from what I, I haven't, I haven't checked in for a little while, but he's not signing with anyone. He's going to go indie. And what was so crazy is the song was so homemade. The video it looked homemade. It was... Right. It was just everyone was ready to hear what he what he was talking about. And I knew instantly that everyone in the industry, everyone in Nashville was so mad, you know, that this guy and the rest of us right. were 
like, oh, what a breath of fresh air. I wonder what's going to happen with him. I bet he's been getting some pressure, but he doesn't have to cave because he, I mean, well, what? 200 it's million it's so awesome. Like, Oh, sorry, honey. There's a little delay there. Go ahead. No, I just said, what has he gotten? 200 million views by now? I mean, he, nobody <laughs> tell him, ain't nobody going to tell me nothing, right? Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. Well, that's a, that's the a thing that's great. It's like people are ready for the fresh breath. Uh, they want to, and they've been ready. I mean, it, it, and they're more ready than you think, which is so, you know, amazing. Um, yeah. And people who, again, it's like, they paid for their Nashville artists, their country people to get to a certain place. And then who is this blue schmo who comes in from out of nowhere? And it's like, gets all the attention. It's like, but that's where we're going, right? That's our ascension. It's the unplugging. It's the, the getting into our sovereignty. So we don't have to, um, we don't need to rely on, because the thing is, you know how it goes. If we don't need them and they know that we're not relying on them, then they die that whole system goes away. And that's going to be, you know, you see where we are, we're like walking in between the two worlds right now. This is what I call it, where you're, you know, on one side playing the game because it's part of it. But the other side is like, we're unplugging and people are noticing and people are wanting it. Just the, the sheer numbers of how that happened. It's like, that tells you something. The barometer is up. People want it. You know, I think that all of this, the the indie music, the indie film, because Hollywood seems to be dying. I was talking to my son about this. I have a 14 year old who he loves uh, theat acting in theater. He does Shakespeare and loves it. And I'm, of course, encouraging him to do what he loves. And I wouldn't send him to Hollywood if you paid him enough money. There's no money on earth that would have me go feed him to those lions. Mm -hmm. But I, I said, you know, Hollywood's in its death throes. It, it's just, it, it doesn't seem to have produced anything. And he said, mom, every movie that's come out in the last three years has been garbage, except for Avatar. He said, Avatar was good. The rest of them have been garbage. He said, well, there have to be movie makers out there making movies that are going to be looking for actors. They're going to be looking for talent. They're not Hollywood. And so it is exciting to see all of these, because we need entertainment as part of being a human is, is telling stories and and, you know, putting our skills and our talents to work. And so this next group, this next wave of young talent and actors and musicians, I think it's exciting to think that the industry isn't, doesn't have to be the way to go. And what do you think about that? Because you have an inside uh, perspective when it comes to Hollywood as well. Yeah, I think exactly the same thing you said. It, it, it's 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 a, it's becoming so many things are becoming dinosaurs. I mean, this bifurcation, as we like to speak about, right? The splitting of the worlds. There's definitely there's there's going to be that where they're playing that you know the old game, the old way. But there's a whole rebirthing where people are like, you know what? We can do things on our own merit. We don't need to show up in the way that that industry especially needs us to show up. And then we're going to have all these, as you see, um, sprouted, you know, new things that are, that are sprouting out. And I think it's very exciting actually as, as, as dark as it's getting out there because it's getting really dark in all the areas. I think we need to be able to see the dark because we have to see what's been happening, you know, what's really going on and the only way we can get through that is to see. And so we're witnessing, you know, a lot of things that we were like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that was true. Oh, wow. Everyone's like, every day it's a new thing. You're like, I had no idea. I had no idea. What? You know, I mean, let's let's look at it. I mean, you, you and I both know as musicians that there was a time in what it was in the 1950s. Look this up on Google where music was down tuned from that uh, where they, you know, all the violins and the orchestra, they, um, go to the 440A. 432. Yeah, yeah. The 440. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was down tuned to 440, but it was at 432. Actually, up. No, it was 432. And, and then they tuned it down to 440. Uh, to, I, to me, I think of it as tuning it up to 440, but either way, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Right. So they tuned it to me, tuning down. Right. You're right. But tuning, I say to, to a lower frequency. So me, it feels like. Oh, it, okay. I see what you mean. Like a more, it's yeah. technically a higher frequency. It's technically 440, right. 432, but it's a frequency. 432 is the frequency of the, of nature. 
it's what resonates. So they, right. they, us. So they took us, they, t- they tuned us to a lower vibration so that we could not be connected to nature and hear all the stuff. So look at what's happening. Look at all the music that's coming out in with Solfeggio and in the old, all in, incredible new places that plug us back into our spirit, into nature, into all of the things. So it's, it's an exciting time for people to even know that. And they did that right under our noses. You know what I mean? No. And specifically for control. And f- just knowing that I'm about to release a new song. It's going to be in a couple of months, probably, but it's my song, Texit. It's the anthem for Texas independence. And we invite, I can't wait to hear it. yeah, it's, I'm so, I'm really happy with it. And I did it in 432. Why not? Yeah, right. Yeah. And so there you go. So it's like this new, this revolution of we're getting back to, because everything is frequency, everything is vibration. And the they, of course, in the music industry, they know that. So all the music that is in the corporation, let's call it, has been tuned. I'm going to say detuned out of, away from nature. So we'll just, whether it's high or low, detuned away from our ability to connect into our souls in a genuine way. Therefore, what happens is, there are spaces, because I've seen this as me, I'm a shamanic practitioner and um, I, I work in the shamanic realms and in, in, in channeling. What happens is, and I've heard it, I've actually heard this, where that detuning, it's like as if there are spaces and in between those spaces pauses, there are dark entities that enter into that space and work on the people's nervous system in their um, whole bodies to make sure they're following a certain agenda and narrative. So when we put our music back to the connection of nature, your song that's coming out, I have them coming out as well. um, People get hooked back in. That's definitely something that, you know, it's, it's, it's newer. I mean, it's been going on for some years now, but it's newer and it's things that we need to do to plug back in. So you, so, I'm so, so that, you know, that was a question I had before we, I wanted to move into this more spiritual realm with you um, and talk about what's been going on with the nature, our own, our human nature. But I did have that question. Do you, are you still making music? Do you intend to, did you stop? And apparently not, you have a song. So tell me about that really quick before we go on. I do. I have, I don't have like a song per se, like you have coming out, but I have music that I'm working on. Um, to heal humanity in terms of plugging us back into our authentic nature. Um, Just really doing some cleanup work (laughs) on on what's been done. I'm going to do some some humanity damage control in the music area, just so people can settle back in and remember who they are. Because you know how it is in the music. When you hear things in a certain vibration, your body, it settles in a certain way. Or if you hear something, you, you know it, you have a reaction to it. Music and sound, I mean, let's just say I'm, I'm going to be on, it's very cool, on uh, the Divine Light Healers Academy, this wonderful girl, and she has a, a course in, in uh, expanding spirituality, and she's having me on again to do a voice activation, um, and in it, I speak about um, the fact that, right, sound is the first thing, light was second, but sound was first, so the whole cosmos and universe was created from sound. And so when you know that every person on planet can be manipulated through sound, and that's something that has been done for a very long time, people being manipulated through sound. So by musicians like yourself coming out with music that is tuned to the correct frequencies of nature, we can bring back things very quickly because the more people that hear that, and that's what I'm trying to do, get out the more and more people hear the correct tunings. We're going to settle right back into our creation that of where we're supposed to awesome. be. Awesome. Yeah, it's true. Music can absolutely send you into an emotional state more quicker than anything. And yeah, in the beginning of the word, it was the spoken word. So I want to talk about your shamanic, um, you do shamanic beauty, you're, you do uh, retreats and what is it? So, so somehow both of us uh, as musicians, I think, I think there's something when you're a musician that's 
impossible to put to words that's a connection to the divine because you have a connection with music, which is something you can't really describe. And then you have the muse where the word music comes from as a songwriter, as someone who creates music, when that inspiration comes, there's nothing else like it in the world. There's nothing that can describe it. It's like a poet being taken by the pen, literally. And so, you know, there is a divine out there, even in your darkest times when you're questioning everything, there's still a connection that we can't deny. So I think that being a musician lends itself to spirituality. So it doesn't surprise me that both of us have gone down that path as well. What is it you're doing right now that's not music? So, you know, it's funny, I guess everything is everything's kind of music, you know, but just, just in, in you um, um, talking about that, it led me just, just for a moment to, and this ties in with the shamanic beauty uh, because again, it, it really is all music and sound. I, I developed a, a brand uh, called Shamanic Beauty, which speaks to the beauty is the path of the soul, how the soul is developing in the path of life, that we walk the beauty path. And the shaman part is each of us is waking on, up to our own abilities to be our own shaman. And the shaman is a person that channels in from source consciousness it's very important, I feel, also in the sovereignty piece that we do our own healings. I don't refer to myself really as a healer because it gets too out of hand, you know, although yes, I help people to heal. But one of my big things is that I help teach people how to be their own healers, how to be their own shamans of their own soul's path, which is the beauty walk. It comes through a lot through sound, through, yes, through meditation, through breath work. I am a breath work. I do a transformational breath work, which is, um, I learned, uh, I have a mentor, Brian Kelly, who is absolutely amazing. I've done breath work for years, but breath work, the way he combined it with Stanislav Grof, uh, the father of breath work, incredible, in, with coaching and with music, so it's all sound driven. I have, and I'm gonna to come to Austin, as a matter of fact, I wanna do a really fun event because I have those incredible headphones where you hear the music and it takes you on a whole journey, medicine journey with the voice through coaching. And you actually feel through your body, like these vibrations, these things letting go, there's this incredible release that happens. So breath work is a big thing, but breath work, again, it's all in the shamanic realm uh, because breath is spirit. And it is, you know, the original source, the infinite intelligence lies in the breath and the breath comes into the body. And it's like a heat seeking missile, I call it, because when we're doing the breath work, you're in a deep subconscious state, very deep hypnosis. I'm also a, a clinical uh, hypnotherapist, but literally that the breath work drops you into deep theta state. And in that the breath actually goes into the body to find stored traumas that have happened. You don't even have to remember them necessarily, but the breath will find it. And that's such an important piece. It's a very shamanic in nature because this is where you are, you know, beginning to birth the, the truth of yourself. Um, as I, I know, you probably know that book. Uh, it's incredible. The body keeps score so that everything, you know, the, the no. issues are in the tissues. No, I don't know. This yeah, book. it's amazing. Oh my God, the body keeps score is amazing. And um, um, there's the other book. There's a book on frequency that's amazing. I'll think of it in a second. But it all has to do with it, it, sound, frequency, vibration, where you are, what's being held in your body. And the breath actually goes, it finds it, and it releases it. Oh, and I want to learn incredible. this. I want to learn this because this sounds like a hack to get rid of trauma. We've been talking so much about trauma. 
Yeah. I mean, th- most people to get rid of trauma, first of all, they have to go back and remember it, deal with it, forgive themselves, forgive the other people involved, do that a few times, feel the feelings that you were running away from, which all of it brings up fear and then people get anxiety and there's just all this trauma work that needs to happen. And it sounds like you have a way of vibrating it right away. Ooh, I want to do Girl, it. What? What you just said, a hack, it is such a hack because it's, boom. I mean, literally people have said, I have gone to therapy for however many years. I have done this for however many years. I've done this kind of, and in one session, they're like, this is like probably the most important thing that has like ever happened to me. And I did not, I'm I'm recent into stepping into this type of breath work in the past two years. And I am so thrilled to have this. It's like my main shamanic tool right now, because it, like you said, we don't have time. We don't have time. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. We need like the hack because we have so much to do. We have so much to complete and to do it in a, a from the healthy version of yourself, right? That we got to get this stuff done. So I'm so happy about it. Yeah, I'm going to, at some point, we'll have to, we'll, we'll do something. Maybe we'll do something there. I'll come in and bring a breath work journey there for okay. people because it's profound. Two things really quick. One is maybe at the end, would you do maybe a five minute breath work with for freedom junkies that are still listening? Could we do it? We could do it. The only thing is I would need to hook up the music part. I know if this is part you can, I would love to do it, but the way this breath work is done, we need a little bit more. We need, okay. a, we need a little bit more, um, but I would love to come back and we could, if we had a little more time, we could do it. And we absolutely could do something because I want it to be more complete 100%. Okay. Well then let's do a follow-up to this interview and, or chat, whatever we want to call it and do some breath work for the people, for everyone who wants to try that. I would love, 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 love to do that. Let's, let's, let's make it a date and we'll get it on. Okay. The second thing is I want to get into how you became a sovereign freedom junkie, like how you woke up. And I want to do that, but I have to go to the bathroom so bad. So (laughs) I want to just pause this and run, use the bathroom and come back in a minute. Perfect. I'll do the same while you're doing it. Okay. I'm pausing. We we did. I love it. Okay. So that was a first. I haven't ever had to take a break in the middle of a podcast, but I'll tell you what (laughs) I've, this is my third day of deworming myself. I've been doing the F E N B E N. I'm not going to say it. Maybe we can put this on YouTube. Um, it's an equine D wormer. Anyway, three days I've done. And so I'm just kind of more kind of weird. And, um, my, um, Today I'm starting a juice fast. So I'm gonna do that for 10 days. Probably, probably 10 days. That's amazing. I love like we're on the detox and we have to be on that. I'm gonna do that warmer thing you're talking about. I know I I did a 15 day water fast at the end of September. That was phenomenal. I have never done 15 before, but it was amazing. I've never done more than three days of a water fast. And it, I was so clear after that three days. I mean, talk about connected. I can't imagine 15 days. You could easily do 15. You you don't even know. Like once you get past the three and then you're like, okay. And then you get past like five, seven was a little gnarly. But, and when I got to eight, it was like, I was like, what's happening? And I like realized we don't really even need food. (laughs) It's like, this is incredible. I I could have kept going on, but I had a lot of uh, obligations that I needed to really meet people and be more present. So I was like, I have to get off, but I actually did not want, I could see doing 21 or 40 day now, but once you push past, you, you could totally do it, do it. Yes. I will eventually. This is my third juice. It's been a year since we've done it. Both of us, my husband and I both just felt like we wanted to clean out. And, and so I'm just a little bit, my, I feel a little bit just weird inside, you know? So yeah. Anyway, good. That means, that means stuff's happening. That's good. Stuff is happening. <laughs> so, your awakening. I don't know that I've ever talked about mine on here. What gave me that? I mean, I I was a child that questioned everything already. You know, yeah. When I was eight years old, I questioned my own religion. Like, 
is my Jewish friend going to go to hell, mom? And she looked at, I was eight years old. And she said, she looked me right in the eye and said, I cannot tell you that your friend is going to hell, Betsy. Well, then I said, what about all the Aborigines who are never going to hear the good news? What about all the, everybody who lived before Jesus? Are they in hell? I mean, I had all these, like, I was like, ding, ding, ding. And as a little kid, and that threw, that threw a big monkey wrench in the religion that I was going to have for the next 10 years or so. And so I've just, I've just questioned everything. Then I got turned on to Bill Cooper and Behold a Pale Horse when I was in my 20s. And that was it. I've been a- aware of the bullshit since I was in my early 20s. So what, how did you get on? How did you learn that everything's bullshit? <laughs> wow. Well, it's interesting because you, you just plugged into something really a big story in my life around eight years old, but just to go to the Behold a Pale Horse. Do you remember that back in the day you, you read it in whatever bookstore you were in and you did not purchase it because <laughs> you were like, you couldn't purchase it because you'd be on some kind of list. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I'm, I've been on lists. Yeah. And no, somebody gave it to me. Somebody gave right. it. To well, me. that's good. <laughs> that's good. I remember back, back in LA when we saw it, the Bodhi tree, all of us were like, you know, don't buy that. Just sit over there at the bench and you'll just come in and read. <laughs> it's like, but, um, you know, it's very interesting that you said that at eight years old. So let's say my very first, first awakening, and it had to do with religion as well. Like we're right in the same space. Uh, I questioned things when I was very young, but when I was eight years old, uh, my brother and I, we were adopted, we were in foster care home, and then we were adopted into a very odd and backward community. Um, I was, we were, I was to be raised Jewish because my birth mother was Jewish into a Jewish family. My father was Jewish. My mother was Catholic. And there is that story where, um, they got the so-called hard to adopt kids men, meaning non-white kids, because they were not financially stable. They were different religions and they had a big age gap. And um, the reason I mention that is because they were ousted from their families who were very prejudiced when they did adopt us. And they moved us out to a community way out in the country in Pennsylvania that was also very backward. They didn't know that. But what happened is when we started going to school, we were very bullied, you know, called all the names, all the things. And we were also the only Jewish kids in the school. They were also all white kids, very lower um, middle class factory workers and just uneducated, you know, and they had never, you know, Jewish people killed Jesus. This was a big thing. And then also we were called all, all the other things and we were, you know, terribly alone and bullied in this community. So. Uh, my parents being unaware and just thinking, well, we're going to move out and get out and just kind of be in our own independent world. That didn't work out because the world followed us. And my brother, one morning, I was eight and he was nine, one January morning, decided he didn't want to be late. We were always late for school. He didn't want to be late and teased, which always happened by the kids. He just was, wanted to start fitting in, you know, it was like after Christmas holiday And it was January, the start of the school year, and it was going to be different this year. And the bus went by one way. We had missed it. We were going to be late. When it comes back the other way, we have an opportunity if we cross the street to get it. Well, he panicked and ran out. He was hit by a car and instantly killed. And that night, um, he came back in spirit because he hadn't known that he had passed. You know, a lot of times when little kids are killed so instantly, they don't know. I mean, it happens to adults. I work in this realm where I help people to cross over. Um, They don't know because it happened so quickly. My brother didn't know. And so when he came back to me that night, he I'll never forget it. He literally comes in and gets in bed and is so sorrowful that he is leaving me here in this place. I'm crying. I'm just, you know, you can just imagine the scene. But what happened? And this is what speaks to what you said. Jesus showed up at the head of the bed. Now you have to know, we killed Jesus in school. We didn't believe in Jesus. We weren't singing the Jesus love me. Yes, I know. So it was some soothing song when my brother was killed and it was rough. I didn't have that. I I didn't do that. And yet there was Yeshua. I'm going to call him Yeshua showed up 
at the head of the bed. And it seemed like he was there for hours. And I, I knew inside me, I kept going. And my brother, we were like, but we killed you, you know, cause we're little kids. We don't know. It's like, but we killed, why would you be here? And there was just this blanketing of love that was so something I can't even describe. There is a frequency that the ascended masters carry with the great avatars of Kuan Yin and Buddha and Yeshua. They carry with them the Mary Magdalene. I've had a communion um, with her, the mother Mary all have a very specific frequency. Yeshua's frequency, it was a blanket and he showed me and it was as if I traveled with my brother to take him and he brought him to safe passage. And in the morning I, he was gone and I was there, but I had the information in me. I had the anointing and I knew from that day, you couldn't tell me anything about anything that wasn't, you know, I had that inside me. And I carried that light with me for many years. I, in 2012, actually had an experience with Yeshua. That's a whole other thing that we can go into in another. It's a beautiful thing that has to do with alchemy and why it was just incredible. But once again, over the years, sometimes I'm like, did you make that up? Did that really happen? You know, did that really actually happen? I always had it with me. But on 2012, I knew it did because it was the same frequency that I felt all the way back when I was eight. And I was like, yes, that happened because there's no other frequency like that. It's just, he's, Yeshua is very specific with that. So your mom, <laughs> the answer, the question you asked your mom, you know, well, of course not. Like there's all the avatars. Yeshua just came, of course, at that time to help enlighten humanity because humanity was once again in trouble. And I'm sure that if Yeshua was here right now, <laughs> be on the he'd be on the no fly list <laughs> you know he'd be you know he's a freedom fighter he'd be getting interviewed on your show like it'd be the whole thing all over again yeah i think and, it's interesting that when he came look to the part of the world he came in yeah, yeah. And the, hello hello right still are we still doing that guys are we still oh are we, we still yeah so yeah. phoenix thank you for sharing that story i did not know about your brother and i'm um, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm not because I know, you know, that was such a, he, he came in to give you that gift. He gave you oh. that. You got that uh, shifting message that shifted your very cells, almost like you shifted your DNA. It shifted your, your entire being. You felt that love. I've had similar experiences, not, not as traumatic as that, but what the morning my grandfather died. And this is a, this is a such, we go way back. I was born deaf and he gave me his hearing. That's a great story. He, he asked, oh, God, amazing. He asked wow. God to take his hearing and give it to me. He said, I'm a 65 year old man. I've had my hearing all my life. I can't imagine this little baby going through life without her hearing. Take mine. He was wow. deaf. He went, he woke up the next morning and couldn't hear. And he, he didn't have his hearing for about 24 hours and it came back and they went and banged a pan and I could hear, and it was a miracle. And of course I was a tiny baby. I was an infant. So I don't remember that, but I remember the story being told. And I thought that sounded normal. I thought miracles were just t totally normal. That's just must happen to everybody. And so I've never had a problem with miracles at all. In fact, I know they are, they happen anyway. He was such a powerful soul. The, the morning he died, I woke up before my alarm went off in the cabinet camp. I was at camp in Arkansas and I never woke up before the alarm and I was in a fetal position and my body was like lead. I could not move. And it was the most peaceful feeling I've ever experienced in my life. I have experienced it again during a, a Reiki treatment, which was interesting too. And I, again, lost feeling in my body, but it's not scary. It was a peace that passes all understanding. Just complete peace is the way I didn't describe it as love, but it totally shifted me because I know what that feels like. And I, heard the girls in the cabin start, the alarm went off and the people started blow drying their hair. And I slowly got my fe feeling back. I had been dreaming that I was reading to my grandfather and I never dreamed about him. And then I got the call. I'm making this as quick a story as I can. And my, Thank you. Yeah, my, 
dad uh, was on the phone and we weren't allowed to take phone calls at camp. I knew something was up. And he said, we need to tell you, your grandfather passed away this morning. And I said, what time? And he said, it was uh, just before seven this morning. And uh, your grandmother was reading to him. She always did read the newspaper to him in the morning. And he had a massive heart attack and died. And I knew that he had visited me and given it just to give me peace. I never was sad about his death because I knew that he, I knew that feeling of peace. I felt it, it was almost like I had a near death experience by feeling that. And it shifted me forever. It wasn't Yeshua and it wasn't love. It was my grandfather and it was peace, but it's a gift that I've never, that'll be with me forever. So yeah, that, that is so amazing that of course, and in your music, he knew that you needed to hear in this lifetime, mm. you know, this was part of what you were doing and you know what it is Yeshua because all of the avatars it's it's all we're all entangled in the quantum field like when we feel miracles I mean that's a true healing miracle that your grandfather transferred his hearing to you I mean it doesn't get more miraculous than that I mean that's that's straight avatar shit <laughs> that's like so cool and and you know that the what you said too about miracles you know is, isn't it fascinating too you know when people like okay miracles happen the 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 very um, activity that you and I are doing right now that we're seeing each other in physical body and talking, the fact that like we're here in this realm, I think everybody forgets like it's a freaking miracle. We just take for granted that we've come from another realm, a spirit realm without a body and have petitioned to have a body to come through a time portal, which is the womb and step into this existence and animate ourselves you know, like, and what the hell? Share. Like, that is the big miracle. Like, it doesn't get better than that. It just does not. It's like, many times, you know, when I'm thinking, this is the time where if you close your eyes for a second, and everybody who's listening here, it's just close your eyes just for a second, just for a second. And then breathe your eyes open. And go, like, where am I? Like, how did I get here? Like, we don't even know, like, what a miracle and a mystery. It's like, how did this even happen? I mean, it's just mind to me. I stay in that mind blowing presence all the time. I call it the walking meditation, because that really is true. If you stay in that presence, that you're constantly, you are the miracle, creating the miracle, creating your life, creating everything around you. Like, wow. Wow. What a gift you just gave everyone, everyone who hears this podcast. What a gift. I think of it as how amazing we are. The miracle of the, the one little sperm and egg that came together and made you and that all of our systems work, our digestive system and our nervous system. And we have the ability to learn and we are so freaking amazing. Every single one of us just having incarnated and, and people forget, we look around and see that other people are amazing, but we forget that we are. Right. And, and, yeah. Right. And all the systems are working. You're like, and you don't even know how they're working. It's like, people go, I don't believe in God. I'm like, okay, tell me how your heart is working. Could you tell me how your liver is? How are you, how are you doing that? It's like, oh, it was like pure miracle. It's like, there's no other way to describe it. It's like, it's, man thinks that they could try to uh, imitate this. There's no imitating this. You okay. cannot imitate the blood code. Yeah. Next okay. topic. <laughs> like, that way. just got us into our next topic. Yes. Into how yep. this transhumanism crap. They're trying to stop mm -hmm. what we're talking about. This yeah. fact that all of us are walking around as miracles. They've done everything they can. They're going to try to chip us. They're going to try to... Uh, um, I don't know what you'd call it, like merge us with remerge us with with robots, right? Or right. mind and everything. And some people will go. I saw a video the other day of a lady. Well, I've seen a few where they're getting the chip in their hand, and they're like, "Isn't this oh, yeah. cool?" Right. Mm -hmm. oh, it's much more convenient when I go buy Whole Foods to just go. You're like, what? How convenient? Do we don't need cash. Well, okay. Well, that, that's. 
that's the big thing that we get unplugged from. So, you know, we're, we're not doing that. We are in the other part. We are in the Ascension code. We are reconnecting our 12 strand DNA. That's what we're doing. Okay. So my thoughts on the whole trans, whether it's transhuman, transgender, tweaking the human mind so bad that we don't even know what truth is anymore. If we don't have, so we don't know anything, right? We like, we, 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 like you said, we open our eyes and go, what the, <laughs> what is this? How did I get here? And right. How magical it is. And, and I have relationships with people and it's just amazing. Music happens. It's amazing. There is, there are certain things that as human beings, in my opinion, create truth. And so I've done a little bit of study of, of natural law. What is it? Where does our, where do our rights come from? What are human rights? What are, and, and they go long, way before the constitution, way before anyway, way before the, anybody said you get rights. We, we have rights because we are um, the children of the divine here on the planet. But what make, gives us an understanding of that is what truth is. And there's only a few things that are pillars. And the main one is male and female. It's the yin and the yang. It's the dark and the light, the cold and the hot, the long and the short, the you name it, the, the strong and the soft, the it's that polar world that we came into so that we can recognize ourselves. And it all boils down to the male and the female. That is it in nature. And they're trying to make people think that there's more, that th that isn't the case. And if they can pull that one over on humanity, then we have no ground to stand on. We'll believe anything. Does that make sense? What you just said summed up the whole thing. There's a sentence I was trying to I want to remember. You said so that we can, so that we don't recognize ourselves. That what you just said is it. Because when they're running this program and all of this NLP and advertisement and mind stuff that's going on right now, so that for some reason humanity is not able to recognize itself, they then can run game and do all these things like what they're doing with children before they even get to understand or know what their body part is or how to use it, it's already being removed. So when you get to that point, it's like, and, and, and to it, they're very well. And I, I know some absolutely in our friends who have gotten to, a, you know, an adult stage and go, God, you know what? I, I feel like I just might've been born like in the wrong, but I'm feeling different, but they've already gotten to a stage where they know who they are, they can, are able to recognize themselves, but, and, and then have at it. But before that, before you can recognize yourself, there is this agenda with mutilating and cutting off genitalia so we can no longer recognize ourselves. And that is the demise of it all. I mean, it's crazy. I, I you know, um, and for us to wake up, out of this night, this is a big part of the nightmare of like I was saying, you have to see how dark it's actually gotten or how dark it's actually getting to then shift a whole entire other generation that's coming up so that they don't recognize themselves within, you know, this whole corporation matrix. You got a real issue. And so that's actually a happening. And it, it, it's so crazy because I grew up, I was a tomboy, you know, and, and too, actually when too. my brother, it, we were doing tree, we were swinging from trees. And for me, it was very pointed. I may have been even with my brother not having um, passed, but when my brother passed, the sadness of my parents, the sadness of all of us, but my father, he really, it was like having that boy, you know, who did sports things and did mechanical things, all of that stuff. I shifted myself into boy mode. I was very close to my father to help heal that wound in him. I know that I did. And I learned all the stuff I learned. I can do car stuff. I can do, you know, sports stuff. I was like his coach. It was like, come on, dad, we're going to go out and heal you. He had a heart attack, like the week after my, no, I think it was a couple of days after my brother was killed and he almost left planet. And I was determined 
to to get him up. And I was very bored. Now, if that happened today, they'd be like, oh, okay, you know, t t cut her breasts off, take her uterus out, and like, let's add an add on. I'm like, and, and no, no, you just don't know what people are working on. This is what this is the soul's journey. Again, like we talked, this is a miracle. And many times it's the tough things that the kids are going through that forges them into the fucking diamond that comes out on the other side, but they're not letting people have that opportunity to your kids. They're punishing parents for like trying to protect their own children. It's fucking well, madness. And how wonderful, you just sparked a thought for me. How wonderful is it since we do have each one of us as a soul individual, as a sovereign individual, we have a masculine and a feminine in us. Yes. And sometimes we relate to one or the other more and it helps us get through in life. And my thought was how wonderful it is for a woman to grow up and really be in touch with her masculine side so that you can put yourself out there like a Leo, you know? And have confidence and have all the stuff that's on that young side of the, you know, be, be willing to be loud and be heard and be strong, but you're a woman and how on the opposite, how wonderful is it to have men in the world who are in touch with their feminine side, who may have when they were younger, like you, like we have a word for it as women, we were tomboys. Totally. I was totally a tomboy. Uh, and I didn't really uh, I want to say identify with my femininity until my twenties. And I realized I could wear coral, not pink, but I could wear coral. And I liked being a woman. It was probably 23 years old. So, and I do love being a woman and I love being a mother. And if someone had taken that away from me, Ooh, it would be bad news for, for those people. But, um, I just had that thought that by having children that are, you know, like I was saying, we have a word for it being tomboys. I don't think we have a word for it. If there's a boy, we call him effeminate and we're like, oh, he's going to be yes. gay, you know, and, right. and he might be, and that that's a path, but choosing a different gender when you could maybe just as an adult man, really have this compassion and this softness that you're fine with because you really, yeah. have, you know, I mean, there's, there's so much, but changing the anatomy that God gave us, it, it absolutely blows. No, it goes again. It, it's crimes against humanity. You know, there's crimes against divinity. It, it, it's, it's, it's a crime in every way to, to do that before somebody is in their grown up ability to make that choice. You know, we hear it all the time. It's like, you can't vote, you can't drink, you can't drive. Oh, but you can cut your dick off. Like, stop it. Like, it's it oh, just stop. It, 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 it's utter madness. And it, it's utter madness. Everybody knows it, but they're trying to pretend like it's not, which is also the mind fuck. Sorry, sorry, audience, they're gonna be flying. <laughs> My dad was in the military. I had all these words, um, but what you said too is so key which we have the tools that's we have the divine tools of inside both of us being able to use the masculine or the feminine side of side of us at will those are tools and when these um mutilations are happening i'm just going to call it that um you're it's like your divine tools are being taken away and and that's you're being stripped of your divinity and that's what's happening right now the the and it's happening on on so many levels and i know people are waking up to it um and i think they're going to wake up you know from the mouth of babes i just saw an instagram post this morning of a transgender um a boy who went to a girl had the whole operations all of it wanted to look like barbie and now on the other side it's probably not even 20 went through two different surgeries and he said she said um, I really regret this because I just, I had no idea in the complications and surgery. And there's a whole thing that you have to, you know, keep, you know, doing a whole procedure every day to keep the new, you know, feminine pathway, the vagina open. And he's like, I, I didn't know that that's what was going to go down or have an infection in my whole entire life. 
is based around that. So I do believe, and I've heard a lot of this. So I know that it's from the mouth of babes that it's going to come because the idea that adults, doctors, parents, teachers, psychiatrists are encouraging this. And now you got kids going, well, and I know several parents who bought into it, had their kids do the transition and now their kids are suicidal. Right. They're like, I've seen a can't. couple of those of, of a couple of those girls that became boys the other way around. Yeah. There's a, there's a girl who's being very vocal now. She's over 18 and she's been testifying before Congress and stuff saying this has to stop. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I don't, I'm not okay with this. I should have been a girl, but I will never be a girl because they gave me the puberty blockers. They gave me testosterone. I will. Yeah. She will probably never be able to have children or anything. It ruined it for her. And she is. And like you said, out of the mouth of babes, it has to come from them and it is happening. And what I think is in 50 years or in the future when, or in a hundred years or in 500 years, when we look back on this time in history, it is going to have been, I mean, idiocracy. These people. Right? Were Can you imagine? Right. You're, I love that too. That look where you're like, you're going to look back and go, remember there was a time when we approved that our children's genitals could be changed or cut off or added to. We're going to go, are you serious? That did not happen. <laughs> Tell me that didn't happen. I'm like, no, it happened. I mean, it's so freaking what? obvious. Nature, everything has a male and a female, everything, even trees, the bees, the kangaroos. So, you're all, so you know, people. that that this is a this is a population control agenda stop them having from having babies you know what that is too it's like it's it's more and more of the same of the but that's okay because we're going to wake up from this nightmarish thing we're going to wake up we are and i okay. you'll have to um let me know about who that the girl is i don't know about her it'd be wonderful to hear so that i can share that because she needs to be shared yep i can find it um well so Freedom Junkie Radio has turned out to be all about solutions and creating the new and, and what can we do? Because we can sit and talk about stuff all the time. What can we do? And you've already touched on, we touched on, you know, creating the new music industry or, or Hollywood. I've talked to people about creating new medical, uh, um, not medical, but just health and, you know, true health, as opposed to looking towards pills for health, which is ridiculous. And uh, we need a new banking system. We need a new monetary system. We need a new government. We need all of this new stuff. So solutions, you have touched on this ascension that's going on in humanity. Tell us something that's going to, because we just kind of brought the, the vibe down. I'd like to bring it back up. You have a very positive outlook for the future of humanity. Why? Uh, well, I believe in human. <laughs> I still believe in, in humanity. You know, my, my outlook, I actually did some really big looking back. I, one, one of the things I work with um, some of the ancient crystal skulls and I had a brain hemorrhage in 2004 that had me awaken and it's a longer story. I, I won't go into it right now. Had me awaken to the power of healing with crystals and frequency. And a shaman, uh, an indigenous shaman at the time, who was the keeper of the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull that was found in um, Mayan uh, country. Um, some years ago, Indiana Jones, that whole story, this is an actual real skull. He sent me, he had heard that I had a brain hemorrhage. And at that point, again, I was like, not going to stay in the hospital. You're not cutting into my head. We're not doing a surgery. I'm going to heal it on my own. He, when I got home, a friend of mine told him about me and he sent me a crystal from the, uh, that had been charged with the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull. He said, every night, I want you to put this crystal into water and drink the water in the morning. And I started doing it first couple of days, I just did it. But I realized that I started feeling something really insane in my body. It was like this tingling. It was like a vibration. And it was a sound that see, talking about sound. It was like, it was like, mm, it was like an ohm, but um, I was like, am I hearing that? Like it was an actual thing. So I called a girlfriend of mine, uh, one of my 
cohorts and finding out all the things that are going on in the world. I said, you have to come over here. Am I just imagining this? And she comes and she goes, oh my God, no, you're not. I hear the same thing. And so eventually I begin to heal using just this water from the skull. Um, I actually have an episode on the History Channel right now with William Shatner in Unexplained, and he's interviewing me about this whole pro whole thing, this healing I went through, because um, it's pretty miraculous. But what happened is I started downloading Akashic Records, because you realize like crystals are, I, I call crystals the um, physical manifestation of the Akashic Record. So for most of you, I'm sure listening, you you all know the Akashic Record is the history of everything that has happened in time everything that will happen, everything that has happened is happening now. It's the amalgamation of all events. And so crystals that form in the earth at the certain levels of the earth that they form and they pick up the information, they read historically what's happened on planet. And so as when you have something like a crystal skull, this quartz crystal, which, you know, our computers run, our watches run, like everything's running on quartz crystal, our x-ray machines, when you go in the hospital, Everything is run on quartz because quartz has memory. Water has memory. Water is in the crystals. There's all the memory. So as I was drinking this, it wasn't until a couple of years later, and I'm healing and I'm healed, that I start having dreams and I realize that I'm downloading the history because that all of that drinking of that, it got into my DNA. And I, I really became very uh, enlightened to history and galactic history at that point. And so I remembered myself sitting in councils with the crystal skull. And that crystal skull was there at the beginning of humanity. And I came from a galactic, the Lyrans, I'm in the Lyran council, and I actually have the visitations from them who are the father cedars of humanity. They're one of the first ones who helped to put humanity together when they came first to this planet and were making, um, putting humans actually together physically. Some beautiful star nations came together to do this task. I was there. And so I have all the faith that we are going to win this because I've seen it from the beginning. And we are not going to let it end poorly because what we have inside us is something beyond what we could ever imagine. It, it's so profound. It moves me to tears every time. It is our God code and it's our birthright and we're not going to lose it. So by remembering our nature through music, through food, through growing our own food again, through remembering that we can do that and that we don't have to go to the supermarket, that we can do these things on our own. That in essence is getting back. And I see what's happening. People are doing that. So that gives me the hope. I'm like, oh, wow, humanity remembered. Humanity remembered themselves. We're not going to forget. We know how to grow our food. We know how to eat. We know how to think. We know how to come into union with each other. We know we're going back to what we call the hieros gamos, which is the Christos feminine, masculine, where we understand where we came from, the father thought, the projected thought into the earth, into the womb in which we're created. We are not going to forget ourselves. And I see all the hope of people speaking up and saying no, and speaking up and saying, let's get together in community and it's happening. So I know it's here. It's already happened. We're just, we're just following the steps to remember. That's all. Wow. I have never been visited. There's my dog. I have never been, she had to speak. I've never had any experiences with any ETs or anything. So thank you for sharing that because from your perspective and your very profound knowing, you share that with us that haven't, I haven't had that. And you've had miraculous healing and it shifted you. I mean, this is awesome. You're, I can feel it's real. You're the real deal. I mean, when you talk about shamanic beauty and your willingness to go there and your willingness to be vulnerable and allow yourself to go there and then your vulnerability and sharing it with others. Thank you. What a gift. 
It's thank freaking you. real. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thank and you, you just, thank you. yeah, I, I'm so honored for you to have come. I didn't know we were going to do all this. I didn't know it was going to go this long. Of course I couldn't, you know, I know what's going to happen, but what you just made me realize is that, that, that infinity, there's something about the frequency, the, that thing that we hold the mystery where we don't know where we came from. We don't know where we go, but we're here and it's amazing that that doesn't end. It doesn't go away. They can't take, you know, it, it, thank you. What a gift. Thank you. What a gift. Thank you for bringing all of your gifts and everything. Thank you so much for having me. It's beautiful. I can't wait to see you in Austin. We'll have to do some fun of breath work. We'll, we'll do some, visitation and galactic things together i would love to i would love to drop into a place where you can share some of that with me because i know we're able to do that for each other yes, through we are. touch and sound so someday relatively soon i would love for you to come on and do a breath work meditation for anyone who wants to have it and use the music and everything you do so I would wow. love to. It'll be really powerful. Okay. Let's do it. Let's, We're going to be all right, you. everybody. We're going to be all right. Be... And, and, oh, and yeah, the thing is, there's nothing to fear. Death is nothing to oh, fear. Yeah. You and I both know that. We both know that. There's nothing to fear. It's all good. There is nothing to fear. Right. It's all it's all good, but we're 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 doing it this time. And we're going to stay in these bodies for a long period of time because we can do that. Healthy and young, so we can get done what we came here to do. It's going to happen this time. Okay. Uh, I I'd feel um, before we started today, you meant we, we talked about how, when we were just saying hello to each other, we talked about how we're leveling up and how everybody's leveling up. I was like, I'm leveling up freedom junkie radio. You're like, Oh girl, we all are. We're all leveling up. So I just wanted to share that with everybody too. That means you, anyone who's hearing this and you just said it young and healthy Young meaning youthful. I am grooving on my fifties on being, you know, coming into my crone years because that's where my power has always been. I didn't know it. So there's nothing wrong with aging, but you can be a young 90 year old or you can be an old 90 year old. And I see what you're saying. Keep. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep the vitality yeah. there. 100%. 100%. And we can come on. I have a whole thing to talk. I'm working on a book called Beauty Beyond Time. And it's shifting beauty beyond time, um, unlocking the eternal youth code and shifting the conscious collective thought on aging. Because that's one of the things when in the galactic wars that happened and when humanity was taken over and we were cut off from our 12 strands of DNA and brought down to our two, that junk DNA that they talk about, which is not junk, in it lies the fountain of youth and our access to constantly having it. It's called human growth hormone. It's the original um, hormone. It's the master hormone. And we can live in our bodies. Mary, the grandmother, Anna, the mother of the mother of Mary lived for 632 years, very well documented. She knew how to do it. There's many documentations of, in scripture and historical about people who live for hundreds of thousands of years. We actually have access to that. We're coming up on that. That is a leveling up for humanity. Um, we don't have to age. It's, it's actually a choice. It, it's not mandatory. And that's very true. And that's what we're going to start to to well, really you... come into. So I'm working on that very much. I'm working on that whole project. I have a lot of keys and tools for it. So we could do a whole other thing on that because okay, it's really- Okay, you funny. are a, a, a living testimony to what you just said. I don't know how old you are and you don't look a day over 30. And I, I know you are. So- uh, Well, the fact that my oldest son is 35 and okay. my youngest is 30 and I have two grandkids- <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's true I've been working with this for a really long time um, because I remembered it when I was little it was one of the pieces that I got in that anointed message 
And it has to do with being there at the beginning of humanity. So it's like, we're here, we are leveling up and it's really fun. It's a fun ride right now. Like, because we, it's like the seven minute mile, right? No one, or the three minute mile, right? And it was like, no one can run that or whatever it was. And then all of a sudden everybody started running it. Once one person breaks it, the next person, it's like, we have access. So we have access. So that's a whole other amazing topic. We oh my get into gosh. Now. I just love you. I just love you so much. I okay. love you so much. Oh my we God. have to call it. So all right. blessings on everyone who hears this blessings on you. And I'm just wrapping everybody in golden light. We are only available for that, which is of the highest good and of the light. And we are protected and we've got really good work to do and fun to be had too. So much fun. Thank, Thank you. you babe. I want to mm-hmm. throw one more shout out to Chris's coins, K-R-I-S coins. Y'all go get your gold and silver from Chris and tell him Betsy from Freedom Junkie Radio sent you. Get everybody on your Christmas list uh, a little a little stack of silver and gold if you can afford it. That would be Let's awesome. go visit him. When, when I'm in Austin, we'll go visit. Yeah, I'll take you. I will take you there. Yeah. All Let's right. Go. I want to go see Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Goodbye, Freedom Junkies. Till next time. I live better than a king ever did. I live-